We need one person more. Staff at this Toronto hospital are performing a delicate dance. The procedure, called proning, involves flipping the unconscious patient onto their stomach to increase their oxygen. Like most in this intensive care unit, the elderly woman has COVID-19 and she's unvaccinated. Now we're really only seeing critical illness in two types of patients, them being the unvaccinated patients and the immunocompromised patients. Most in the ICU are unvaccinated. Patients like Dawn, who asked us not to show her face. I just feel that there wasn't enough known and I wanted to know a little bit more. But in the meantime, while the more is coming, you could be dying. She caught the virus last weekend. Now she's struggling to catch her breath. I'm going through it, and I'm telling you, it's not something you want to play with. Be careful, do what we're supposed to do, and be vaccinated. No, I'm terribly sleepy. Tired, eh? Really. I just fall asleep standing up. Others, like Fred, lying in a hospital bed, but still standing by his decision not to get vaccinated. I'm still not sure. Oh, yeah? Why, why do you say that? I don't know. It's just a conviction. So I get frustrated when I see an otherwise healthy person. It's a preventable disease. Like, if these people got vaccinated, I wouldn't be their doctor. I wouldn't be treating them in the ICU. Over the course of this pandemic, these staff at this hospital have been performing this procedure on an almost daily basis. But these days, they are doing it with far fewer hands. And that is because this hospital, like so many others, is dealing with an unprecedented staffing shortage. During the first two years of the pandemic, around 500 hospital staff caught COVID-19. With Omicron, they've seen 700 infections just this month. The great majority of our infections come from the community. At the same time, they're also fighting the fallout from another lockdown, a spike in patients with substance abuse, suicide attempts, and those with other illnesses whose treatment was delayed. By the time this patient with diabetes saw a doctor, her infection had spread from her toe to her kidneys. The infection has spread and shut down my kidneys. So dialysis is now possibly a, a, a life-changing um, thing. I pass. After nearly two years and five waves, some of those doing the heavy lifting have had enough. I decided to be honest with you, reflecting it. I can't continue like this. Okay. Fatima Mohammed has been an ICU nurse for 15 years. I'm tired and overworked and underpaid. She says many of her colleagues have quit or taken early retirement. She plans to do the same after the pandemic is finally over. Jeff Semple, Global News, Toronto.